Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to my studio plant tour. So I have around 20 to 30 plants in here and honestly, I'm not even sure what plants people know that I have in here because I did show people in the studio in the documentary in the last episode. So for some of you, this might be completely new. For others of you, you may recognize one or two plants in here, but I'm just gonna go take you around, really chilled out to it and show you what I've got going on. There are a couple of things in this room that I know I've never put on my channel, so that's a little bit fun. So it's probably best to start in this general area. I'm gonna start on the left first. This is actually where I sit and film in most of my videos. I pull out this table over here and I kind of line it up in front of me and I put some soft boxes here and I basically film. So that's what you see before you. Now, normally the plants on these shelves, I'm gonna be brutally honest, I tend to push them inwards like that. So they cover the frame when I actually film videos. But today I've spread them out kind of as they should be on the shelves. But if you're wondering why it's a little bit different to how I film, that's essentially why. So I don't know what order should we do? Should we do top down or bottom up? You pick. Top down. Cameraman picks. Okay, top down or <laughs> straight into the deep end then. <laughs> right. I'll have to pull some of these down because it's going to be impossible to really show you. But on the top of these two shelves are the stuff that I have that's just it's either rehabilitating or we're growing it up here to see how it does in the temperature or maybe it needs more light. There's, there's many different reasons why we're growing things up here. This here is Monstera Deliciosa Aurea large form. So it's not what people know as Borzigiana. It's the big one that gets ridiculous. And people have asked me about this a while ago. I think a couple of years ago on my channel, I had a large one and I cut it up into different leaf cuttings, essentially. We don't have much of that left. I'm gonna be totally honest, most of them rotted and failed. We do have a few nodes going and this is actually a plant that's grown from some of those nodes and it's doing really well. Obviously, this went a little bit crispy. We've got some good variegation coming in on it. It doesn't look like much now, but when it gets big and beautiful, it's gonna be incredible and I really can't wait. So we'll pop him back up. He just chills because honestly, it's it's a really good spot underneath the uh, skylight that we have up at the top that I don't think you can point the camera at because it'll blow out. Can you? So the next plant I know I've never shown on my channel and I had this, no, I picked this up in the documentary, right? So when we went to Netherlands in the documentary to get stuff for the living wall, this was the monstera that I was picking up. And I don't think it's officially uh, described yet. And you should be able to, well, some people should be able to tell what it is by looking at it. It is small, but this is what's known as simply, is it Monstera SP Brazil? That's all it's known as at the minute. Uh, it does have some new growth coming in. I bought it as a one leaf cutting way back then. So this is like the middle of last year. And the main leaf eventually just fell off. I think it's just used all of its energy to make this. I've got high hopes for this. Obviously it's not, actually I would say it's grown reasonably quickly given it's being moved up here. I definitely think it's growing better since it got moved up here. So although it's small now, I hope that this becomes really big and beautiful because I've wanted one of these for a while. I think it was on my, my wish list, like not this year, but the year before, because obviously I already had it when I did this year's wish list. But that's just a plant that I've never really mentioned to anybody. I think probably because of how it looks, you can't really tell what it is. People that know of the plant can probably tell what it is, but most people can't. So that's one of the reasons I haven't really mentioned it. Moving on from that up here, we have a, it's actually a Miss ID. So I got this in late last year, I think, as Anthurium Chamberlainii, except I don't think it is. I don't know if it's an unknown hybrid or what, actually. It's still cute. I love it all the same. It's on the top to get more light and I think it's growing two new little bits of foliage. It's really sprouting, so not much to say about it because I don't actually know what it is. It's still not identified. So yeah, we don't know what that is. So it grows up top and we forget about it. <laughs> oh my God, where's all the water come from? So this is Anthurium Magnificum and I don't know why it's growing funky. I think it's, it, I can't tell if it's floppy right now. It's been like that consistently and I've actually grown it so that I put these two leaves at the back here against the wall, hoping that they would all grow to face the window. That hasn't happened at all. The new leaf has, which is great, but the others haven't. So it just looks a little bit funky for now, but it's really big and healthy. And I, I do think overall it's loving life at the top. 
So it just kind of chills up there. Uh, moving down on the shelf, had this one a long time. This was a variegated Alocasia Silver Dragon. Needless to say, it ain't anymore. It's reverted. It might pop back. I did remove a leaf on it today and it had a little patch on it. I don't know if it's ever going to come back. Obviously, I've got no plans to sell this because I actually only have one in the whole shop and it's mine. So I think this is just going to be a regular old silver dragon. It doesn't stop me loving it though. Um, so it's really cute. It chills here. It's always been small and slightly pathetic looking, but it sits here on the shelf because it's nice and small and it should stay small and not hit the top of the shelf, which is good. This bad boy here is actually from my flat. This is my Anthurium Waraquinum. It's doing all right. It's in a huge pot. It's actually two in one. That's why it looks a bit funky. I don't know what happened to this leaf. This leaf happened at my old flat. It must have just got too dry and I must have just not been there to water it. So it's come out a little bit deformed. But these other two leaves are absolutely fine. So she just kind of chills like that. And I don't think you can really see it in videos. I think this is like part of the cutoff point. But yeah, it just chills here. It hasn't actually had any growth since it's got here, but it also hasn't declined. So I call that a win. After that, people will have seen some of these because I hold these a couple of weeks ago. This is my Syngonium Pink Splash, also known as Red Spot, I believe. I'll drag it out. It's still looking a little bit sad. Well, the old leaves are looking a bit sad. The new ones are absolutely fine. The new leaves are coming in here and they're looking fine, but some of the old ones are just looking a bit not amazing. But I love it all the same. I think there's three in here. That's why it looks extra bushy. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. I've considered just letting it grow down and trail because I think that might look quite cool off the shelves to give them a little bit more verticality, but I also might end up chopping it and making it more bushy. I don't know, I've got options there, but for now, I just think it's really cute the way it sits and it gives the shelf a nice pop of color. On from that, again, people have probably seen this. This is my Philodendron Burley Marks Variegata. It's looking a bit because it's obviously acclimatized itself to the shelf and now it's all leaning forward. One, two, three, possibly four baby plants in here. It's a little bit insane, actually. That's quite a lot for a little pot, to be honest. I think it's growing fine. Yeah, there's nothing coming out of the bottom. It's all good, but that's just chilling there. Um, I'll tackle it now because everyone comments on every video at the minute asking me about this lot. This is just some drunk elephant skincare that I put there. I thought I'd mention it because it's here anyway. No other reason it being here other than I just like the bottles and I use the skincare all the time, which by the way, if anyone wanted to see the video on my skincare, it's up on my second channel now. So I'll link it if you missed it and you want to know about that. I actually talk about these in like a whole one hour long video on that. So I'm not going to touch on that. I just wanted to let people know that there is no wild reason why they're here. I just put them there because I like them and I think they're colorful and I quite like them on my shelves. Down a shelf. Very uninteresting shelf. This is my little Syngonium Albo, bless it. I think there's, oh, there's two in the pot here, actually. I thought there was one. This has actually been the most stable since I brought it up here. The other two are a bit more iffy. This one's just stayed a little bit more stable. Maybe it's tougher than the others, so I'm not really sure. Not much to say about that one. It probably doesn't get as much love as it should because it's just, just an elbow Syngonium. I find the others a little bit more interesting because I don't see them as often, so I don't really think about that one as much. This one, however, Different story. Ben does not like this plant, so I'm going to make even more of a big deal of it. This is my Maranta Lemon Lime, and it's doing great. It is in self-watering. Every plant in here in this room is in a self-watering pot, unless it's higher that are at the top. That's honestly because this place is so hot and dry. It just dries things out too quickly, and there's no way that a Maranta is going to survive without self-watering, to be honest. But since I put it in here, which hasn't been long, week or two maybe, it's been thriving, actually. It's growing an array of knots. Where I'm from, in the UK, these aren't very easy to get. I'm not saying they're super rare, but they're quite hard to get a hold of. Little bit easier now than what they were last year. I think you might have a tough time if you're wanting one, whereas I'm pretty sure in the US you can just get these all the time. Like this is your common Maranta, whereas for us it's the Maranta with the red stripes. So, but I absolutely love this and I keep it here in its nice big pot and it just chills and I love it and it's growing really well. I'll tackle it now because we're here. Bottom shelf, nothing's happening. My shoes are on the shelf. Um, honestly, there's no real reason for this. It's mainly, I just didn't feel the need to just stock all of my shelves with plants. I just, I don't feel the need to. I think I've got enough in here, to be honest. That's why there's nothing on the shelf. I'll tackle it now as well. There's nothing really on the other shelf at the bottom. Although that is the champagne that I drank from my launch when I launched the shop. But we will go to the top of here now. 
and this one is my asparagus fern. Now it could probably do a little bit better than what it is. I haven't really watered it enough and that's because it's on the top and I, for some reason I do tend to forget about it a little bit. It is still in self-watering but I think it gets skipped. I'll try and pull it down. See how much water it has. Yeah it's nearly empty, it's not quite, it's still damp but it's just going a bit bit brown in the middle but it's growing well you can see all the new little fronds on it this one is is not as interesting as the other monstera but it kind of is so these are more propagations from the nodes from the massive yellow variegated monstera but these ones don't really have i think they do have variegation on but it, it's negligible to be honest there's a tiny speck on this one there's a tiny speck on this leaf there's a tiny speck at the bottom of this leaf I'm not going to throw these away because I'm hoping for a miracle. I'm going to be totally honest. So that just lives up here. This little number has only just gone on today actually on the shelf because until today I wasn't aware of the conditions in here. I kind of knew roughly because this is open air in the top so the air from the shop can just circulate it. But this room has always felt a little bit drier and a lot hotter. So that's why it's reading what it is. I've only known about that from today. But it's, it's kind of reading what I thought. It's 27.9 degrees and 72% humidity. It's all right. On from that, we have a wonderful Anthurium vichii that honestly, I cut this today because it had like big gangly petioles sticking out from when it was shipped. And they're always just a little bit tatty. Normally I wouldn't cut them off, but seriously, they were just kind of draped over the side and it just looked a bit shit. It, it's always looked a bit gangly. I think that's why it's here. It's kind of like a no sale vichii. But the new leaf's quite nice though, I've got to say. If they keep growing like this, it'll be lovely. So a little bit of a waiting game for it to look less ridiculous, to be honest. So until such time, that will also sit on the top because it's also too tall for the shelves. And honestly, if you're hoping to get some of these shelves from Ikea, be aware of that. Not a lot fits on them. It really depends on the plant. You can obviously take the glass out and do like two sets instead of, you know, four shelves, but they're not amazing for that kind of thing. I know a lot of people use them, so you probably know this anyway, but I'm kind of struggling with that. Anyway, this bad boy, I don't think he's from my family. I think he's from downstairs, isn't he? Yeah. Brought him up here because I liked him too much. I didn't want to sell him, so I kept him. Um, this looks really miserable and floppy. It's just genuinely how it grew. I think it was quite high up on a shelf and it's just, for some reason, it decided to grow downwards. Fine. Uh, I thought it might have lifted since it's come up in here towards the light and it just hasn't, but this has given me a lovely big new leaf and it feels like it's not hardened off. To be honest, it doesn't actually always live here. It lives on this side of the shelf and points to the window so it doesn't skew. But when I film, I do actually move it to this spot. So sometimes I move things around a little bit. Under here, one of my favorites, surrounded by some more skincare. This is my Miranda Silver Band. I don't shut up about this thing. This was hard to get. This cost me an absolute bomb on eBay. I think it was some point summer last year. I paid quite a lot. I think I paid mid troubles for this. It was smaller than this though. I think it was two or three leaf cutting, something like that, I think. It's grown well though, gotta say. I am hoping to propagate it, but honestly, I'm not in a ridiculous rush. I think I just wanna wait for it to get more nodes and droop a little bit so I can chop it and it's not gonna affect it too much. But until then, I'm really enjoying it because it is one of my favorites. This, I've mentioned this before, I had to trim a leaf off today. It was the tallest leaf because it just went crispy. It was kind of turning anyway, I think, if you remember watching the tour. So I chopped it off anyway because it was just a bit. So this is by Syngonium Strawberry Ice. There's not much to say about it. I, I don't feel any differently from how I felt in the video. Still just, they just look weird. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that it's the burgundy aspect that I don't like, but even the pink bits, I just, like I'd rather have a pink splash. Do you know what I mean? So I'm still feeling the same about this for anyone curious. So the next plant I'm probably not gonna pick up because there's not a lot of point. This is my Marble Queen Pothos. And I think, I think everyone that knew me was quite surprised when I bought this. But this is now like a rare thing for me because I don't see this in shops. I haven't really ever seen these in the UK that often. I think we have every other type of pothos that's sold a lot more. So I saw this and I was just really excited by it. So I bought it to put on the shelf. And to be honest, I'm thinking of cutting maybe this vine here or these two vines here and rooting them so I can put them on the living wall because honestly, I think it would fill up the living wall really nicely with a little bit of a pop of white. I just think it would look really cool on the wall. Plus it should grow like wildfire, shouldn't it really? Hmm. Hopefully. So that's 
one of my favorite things, but it might get a bit shorter. It might get a bit of a haircut, but it's only so I can spread it, really. Spread the love. This is my Golden Dragon narrow form, and it does look a bit pathetic, but it always did. This was another one from downstairs that wasn't really... I want to say it wasn't really sellable. It just looked a bit eh. So I brought it up here because I wanted one for myself anyway. So I'm growing it out, but it, it's... It probably could do with a feed and a little bit more light because it's it's coming in tiny, really. But it's cute and it's still one of my favourites. I just think this isn't the best way to witness it. I think they can look a lot better than this. And to be honest, I've had ones in that are a lot nicer than this. But that, apart from the things that are hanging, that is my general area. Oh, I didn't even mention the elephant in the room. How can I not mention that? Um, people ask me what this is all the time. I bought it when I was on my trip to the Netherlands to get stuff for the wall. I don't know what it is, but I will write for you on the screen what it is because I forgot. I did find out. I know that it's not a palm, correct? Correct. It is some sort of grass. I don't know how tall that therefore grows. This might be Max, I don't know. I can tell you that it has the same care as a Kentia. I'm not doing anything specific to it. The care is just the same if you happen to have one and you want to know what I'm doing. Um, it's kind of taken off my shelf a little bit. Yeah, I love it though, and I think it looks great in all my videos. And to be fair, look at this. It's got such a really unusual leaf shape. Look at that. Yes, yeah, so that's what attracted me to this. It was the shape of these fans, because I've never seen them before, and I just think they're amazing. Um, it is popping a little bit, be it grass. It's still popping. Uh, I think my mum wants one of the pups, actually. I think I can see two pups there. So I'll probably grow one bigger. There's a little pup here, there's a bigger pup here. Grow them out, separate them, pop them, see how we go. I think this whole thing's gonna need repotted at some point because it's in self-watering now. I think it might need repotted soon because I don't know how long it's got left in that pot, but until then, it chills here and I'm very happy about it. And it's gonna be a sad day when I'm sitting there recording videos and it's just grown out of reach of the screen. I'm gonna have to like stand up or something so I still get it in the background. But it's beautiful, it's one of my favourite things. I just can't give you any information on it right now because I don't really know what it is. I just know that it's a grass and not a palm. So moving on, um, this is another plant that is very proud in place and I'm so proud of this I can't even tell you. This was on my wish list and I got it about six or seven days ago and it is in here in this is pond and lecker actually i think it's because i was running out of pond so i didn't get to put the full thing in pond this here is philodendron linamii this is like one of my big wish list plants and when it arrived and i realized how big it was i was over the moon and if you don't know anything about philodendron linamii they're kind of you're either gonna care or not care i honestly think that so the cool thing about them though is that not <laughs> when the new leaves come in they come in this beautiful cherry pink color i'm going to rotate this so you can see here they come in this gorgeous pink color this is toned off a little bit because the leaves coming out and it's going to harden off but you get a beautiful cherry red petiole in the same way that you do on a choco red it's very much the same and the whole leaf will come in a pink shape it will a, a pink shape a pink color sorry it will eventually harden off to a green but you still get a nice wash of pink down the back you can see a little bit of pink around the edges of the leaf. I don't know if that is actually supposed to persist or not, because honestly, this is my first line of my eyes, so I wouldn't know. But I tell you something, gorgeous plant. Um, I'm really pleased to have this. I didn't expect to be able to tick this one off. To be honest, I thought I'd be ticking this off maybe next year, but as soon as I saw the opportunity to get it, I got it. It's probably the most money I've ever spent on a house plant. Uh, yeah, would you agree? Yeah. I would say that this was definitely, I don't like to talk about prices for reasons I've mentioned a hundred times. I'm not going to bore anybody. I think it was four digits and then a little bit more. Um, but I'm really, really pleased to have it. I have a couple more. I don't know what I'm doing with them. So I don't know if I want to propagate them and sell them or maybe I would like to auction one. I haven't got a clue. I'm not thinking about it, but I got a couple in basically to make sure I got this one. So I spent quite a bit of money trying to get this one plant, but I'm really pleased that I've got it. And honestly, it, if it looks like it's taking a pride of place in this corner, it's cause it is. It was actually originally on my coffee table before I started filming. So I might keep it here. I might keep it on the coffee table. I don't know, I kind of like it here because there's nothing here, you know? This is still a little bit folded up off shipping, obviously. Um, but it's just my new favorite thing and I'm so pleased to have it and I can't wait to see it grow. It is a crawler if anybody's interested. Um, so eventually I'll probably have to change this out and get a longer pot, something like that for it to crawl in. But I'm really happy about it. And I'm so proud to have it and I'm pleased to be able to take it off. In the corner, we have my beautiful Strelitzia Nicolai Variegata, you could say. I do have another one of these downstairs and it's larger. This one I just popped up here. I can't remember why I bought this plant pot, but it wasn't for this. I can't honestly remember what it was for. It might have been for my tie at home. 
I don't know how it happened, but this plant pot, it's weird, and it ended up here, and I was in here getting this place ready for the final, like, tour in summer when we were doing up the shop, and I saw the strelitzia, and I was like, you know what? That would grow into that really nicely. So I put it in that, and I quite like it in that. It's had some acclimation coming from a low light place into the window. It has burnt in places, literally, no joke. Um, a little bit crispy, but the new leaves have come in just fine. And we've shut the blinds today to film because it's horrendous and it's really sunny right now. It's probably gonna blow the camera out trying, but it seems fine and we've had the blinds open. So I'd like to think this is kind of hardened off. We'll see, hopefully it won't still burn. Otherwise I'm gonna have to move it. But that's her in the corner in a really weird pot, has to be said, but I actually think it kind of suits it to be honest. On from that, we have our really nice, miserable philodendron serpents. It looks worse than it is. Honestly, this is really firm. There's no real problems with it. It just decides that it's going to grow this way. I've tried putting it every single place to try and get the leaves to raise and it won't. It's quite happy doing this. So this is it. This is what we get. I love serpents. It's one of my favorite plants. It's just, it's just not ideal, is it? It is a climber, which is ironic as hell. Um, it's cool because it's really, really furry. So those that want to know what it feels like, it feels synthetic. It feels kind of like plastic doesn't feel like hair or fur. It's really bizarre, but it is one of my favorites. Lovely backs on the leaves. It's just a bit of a shit looking specimen. This was here from shipping. So that's why that looks a little bit crap. I didn't take it off because you shouldn't, to be honest. So I haven't cut that off, but it, it's just a bit miserable really, which is a shame. It's miserable, but it's not miserable. It's healthy. It just likes to be dramatic, I think, but who doesn't have a house plant that likes to be dramatic? So I'll move around here. This by the way is my chaise long. Correct? Is that what you call them? I kind of have a little bit of buyer's regret because I don't use it. I envisioned sitting in the window reading on it, but the way, I'm just gonna lie on it, the way you sit on it is actually really uncomfortable because you go to sit on it and there's nothing to support your head. So you have to kind of break your neck to do it and it's really not very nice. It should be higher on the back. So I might sell it, who knows. But in front of this, in the window, and this, to be honest, it isn't normally in the window. It's normally kind of on the floor down here. This is my philodendron snowdrift. It looks a bit pathetic. And honestly, I think when I hold it in my, the, the plant hole that featured it, it had like one big root coming off it, so it never had a great root system. It has grown these two leaves in my care and they're a bit diddy compared to the rest of it, but that'll be because of the root system, right? It does have a new leaf coming in here. You just can't really see it. If anyone cares, the special thing about philodendron snowdrift is that, and you, you can't really see it on this. I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up. This looks minty at the minute. They come in a really creamy white color in the same way that a philodendron Florida ghost sleeve emerge. So they emerge a really creamy white and then they will fade down to green over time but you also get these really interesting dark green flecks in them. I think when it grows and it looks good, it's gonna be a nice specimen, but it looks like we've got a little bit of a way to go yet. Down here, people may remember this one as well. This is my philodendron totem. I'm not gonna pick it up, there's no need. Uh, not much to say about this. It hasn't really done anything since I've got it, but if any of you remember, I think I had a problem with the caterpillar when I brought it in, I think it, it kind of rotted off actually, which I thought was very weird because I picked it up myself from a garden center and physically brought it here. So I don't understand why I did that, but it's fine now, it's growing. It just took a little bit of a wobble. So that's him. In the corner, I have a really cute, really pathetic little alocasia black velvet. And I used to have one of these ages ago, like at the start of my channel, I got one. Hopefully it'll get bigger and better. It's in the window now. It has been on the coffee table. It has been on the shelf. It's been pretty much everywhere. At the minute it's on the windowsill and it just chills. Again, it's in pond. Most things in here are in pond. Some things are in soil, but most things are in pond. This here is my, essentially my variegated peace lily. Not so variegated. I've had some issues. Um, this leaf's all green, but we're getting it back. Look, if I just have a little porky of that leaf there you can see that it is coming back. I mean, it's not gonna be strong because honestly it never was, which is a shame. I think this is a Picasso. I think that's the type of piece Lily it is. It is popping, you'll never see on the camera, so I'm not sure you. There are some pops maybe like that big around the base of the piece Lily. So it's a case of just growing that out, waiting till they're big enough, separating them hopefully propagating it that way. I'm not really propagating it for the shop though. It's just kind of for me. This here is my big, gorgeous Stramanthi Trio Star. Again, it is in self-watering and it's done all right. How much has it got? It's nearly empty, that one. It's done okay. It's got some crisping up and I can't work out what it is because I wasn't here when it happened. I'm gonna be honest. It could be the light from the window. 
It could be fertilizer. I want to say it's light because it's happening in weird places on the leaf. I'm not really getting crispy tips. So watering's fine. It's fine. It's just not super perfect. There's a bit of crispiness there. I don't know if you'll see it on the camera or not. Ultimately, it's healthy though, and it's really big and beautiful. It is sitting on my chest of drawers that I just keep really random stuff in. I have some fertilizer for my Hoya that I use. I use orchid fertilizing mist. I'll mention it now, this is my sofa. It's actually a sofa bed, but I don't really use it for that. I just chill out on it and do some work on it. Um, up here is a cool little light that I bought for the wall. If anybody's interested, it's called a nano leaf. You buy it, but you pay for the amount of tiles that you go for. I can't remember how much the starter kit is. It might be about nine tiles, and then you can add on in either three or five tiles. It is a little bit costly, but I thought it was really cool and I really wanted to cover a space on the wall. So that's what that is. I want to film in front of it at some point because I think it's really funky, but I haven't really used it very much to be honest because when I film, I'm on the other side of the room and you can't see it. There was one time I put it on and I put it on when I filmed my Invisalign video and it was on a color cycle between an orangey color and a blue and everybody told me that my white balance was off on my camera. It wasn't, this light was going. So I've stopped using it immediately while I film. I'll probably have to just put it on a single color or something like that. I'm gonna have to kind of move over here for this one. Cameraman's gonna have to come right in. This is my beautiful variegated banana. And again, I hauled this one on a video a while back. It's got really big, it won't stop growing. I don't know if that's one of the original leaves or not. Probably not. It's probably grown even more. The only issue I'm having with it is the edges. You probably notice on camera, the edges of these leaves are going a little bit brown. And this is my first banana that I'm growing. So I actually, I'm not 100% on what's going wrong. It could be salt buildup. It could need a little bit of a flush out because it has been fed quite a bit. It's growing really fast and it's happy. It's just not looking perfection. I thought I'd show it to you anyway, because I know I get a lot of questions about this on, you know, what are you doing to grow it? I'm not really ready to tell you until I at least find out what's going on with this and sort it out. It doesn't get direct sun on it. I know it's not burned from the sun. There's no way it's gonna be burned from the sun, is it? No. Um, so I don't know. I'm gonna go with salt buildup for now until I figure it out, but it's still beautiful. I'm still in love with it. And I cannot wait till this thing grows big enough to fill this beautiful big space up here. I just think it's gonna be amazing. Oh, it's gonna be so good, I can't wait. Even better when it grows so big and it actually just pops out of the top of the, um, of the little studio I've got going on in here. I think it's gonna look amazing. Next to that, you may be able to see is, I haven't named it, I probably should. It's huge. <laughs> this is my beloved Philodendron Gloriosum. It's one of the best things that's ever happened to me, I've got to say. It's gorgeous. It's got a ton of leaves on it. It flowered at one point, but I missed it. I wasn't able to do anything about that. It flowered two or three times, I think. I missed them all. It's beautiful. I've had about three or four leaves since I've had it. So it's actually grown really quickly. It won't really stop growing, <laughs> if I'm honest. I think part of that is the heat up here more than anything. It does get a lot of light, but I, I feel like the heat's really contributing to it. But it's just kind of crawling down the pot. So I think it is going to get to a point where I'm gonna have to cut it. But believe me, I really don't wanna cut it because look at that. Like, <laughs> is that ridiculous? That, there's my thumbnail. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous that it's that big. It's beautiful though. It does kind of, I'm just gonna be honest, it does get in the way of the door. If I move around, the door is here. It's it's getting there now. It's It's reaching a dangerous point, I think but I don't really want to cut it. Even though it completely interferes with my life, I don't really want to cut it because it's massive. Even just the petiole is like that. It's just, it's a monster. I love it so much. Look at that. Is that not just the loveliest thing you've ever seen? I think this was bought to go on the wall and it didn't. And that might be my fault. Is that my fault? Yes. Yeah, Ben's nodding. I just liked it too much. I wanted to look at it all the time. I thought, you know what? At the time I didn't have many plants in here and I had so much space. I was like, yeah, I can take that. This is not a problem. There is a problem. Hi, Kaylee from six months later, there is a problem. It's too big, but I don't want to cut it. I do think we're going to have to. If we cut it, let's put that on the wall. Is that a good compromise? Okay. Right, I think that's it, apart from the stuff on the top. I know I've kept you a long time. So I think the best thing to do for now is I'm just going to pull things down and show you and just stand here because they're, they're kind of everywhere, to be honest. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So I'll start with this one. This really needs a repot, as does, honestly, all the hoyer in here. This is bone dry as well. It needs a water. I actually need self-watering pots because these are even drying out. And if your hoyer dry out, then you know we've got a problem. This is hoyer wayetii. If you see any um, white bits on the plant, it's not mealy, trust me. It's actually polystyrene off where it was packed. And it was packed with a ton of it. 
It's absolutely everywhere. Not only that, but there's perlite everywhere as well. So it's safe, I promise, I've checked it. It hasn't really done much though. It's given me some tendrils and then nothing else. This is probably the Hoya that's grown the least up here. This is my Hoya Compactor Mount Loa, which is different from a regular variegated compactor. This one here is variegated on the inside of the leaf rather than the leaf margin, which you can kind of see a little bit better here, to be honest. It hasn't grown a ton since it's been here, quite honestly. This was sparse anyway when I got it. I don't even think it's grown this on the bottom. It does have a few new leaves, but generally it's, it's another one that hasn't really grown much. This used to be further over here, but I've kind of moved it around the room a little bit to give it some verticality. Uh, they're all on hooks and I can only really just reach them. So this here is Hoya Kentiana variegata. It does look a bit eh. This, if anyone remembers a while ago, this was four tiny little ones. I've basically just potted them all together to make a larger one and hopefully grow it out. The leaves always kind of looked a bit meh, like some of them were snapped when I got them. It's never looked great. I would say it's grown, but it's it's grown a couple of leaves since it was put here, so it hasn't grown much. This one here is, is extremely lucky, I'm going to be honest. This one all about died. It was really, really close to the brink of death and I managed to save it from rot. So it's doing all right. I think this is Hoya Bertonii or Hoya Af Bertonii. I can't remember. I'm not totally sure. It needs a bit of a trim, to be honest. There's loads of space on the vines where there's no leaves, where they've got knocked off. It does have a shit ton of peduncles though. They're absolutely everywhere. If you ever see me taking a picture of Hoya blooms, it's from this one and only this one. This is the only Hoya I have that blooms. I don't think I really have peduncles on anything else yet because a lot of them are quite young. It's quite a nice one. I'm just surprised it's living because it, it went to the brink of death. I thought it was a goner, but it's okay. This is my Hoya Compactor Variegata. This is different from the Mauna Loa. The Mauna Loa is variegated on the inside of the leaf. This is variegated on the outside of the leaf. It suffered. I'm just going to be honest. It suffered and it suffered really recently. I think with turning the temperature up in here, it, it doesn't like it. I think it's just, it's missed too many warrings. So it's not looking as good as it has done. It does have new growth, so ultimately it's okay. But I'm kind of sad because this did look a lot better literally like a week ago. It looked a lot better than this. This is Hoya, I want to say it's Parvi Flora. And honestly, it hasn't done much since I got it. I did pop it into this. It was this color when I got it as well. It's obviously supposed to be this deep green color. This is new growth here. And this is the original growth and it, it was a little bit bleached out. It wasn't the happiest. I thought it would be a quick grow, but it's just not. It's actually growing really slowly. But I do like the foliage that is there and that is darker. I just think it's going to be a long time before it looks quite sexy, to be honest. Here we have one of a couple. I think this needs a water. This is Hoya sigillatus sigitalis. I think it's sigillatus, this one. It's a little bit droopy, but it is growing quite well. As you can see here, this is all new growth. This will turn quite purpley when it's sun stressed. I do have one in my Hoya cabinet outside and it's really purple, whereas this one's really green. So no doubt in summer, this is gonna go much more purple. I think it was more purple until it's come in here. We'll see how it goes. It, it does look a bit sad. I think it just needs a water really. So that one lives up there at the front because I'm hoping to get it purple. This one up here is one of my favorites and it's it's gone a bit nuts, but I keep having accidents and knocking off the new leaves before they develop. So this is my Hoya, I think you call it Dakey Eye. I don't know how to pronounce it. There's a new leaf coming in there. Some of these leaves are old. That's why they look a bit bashed and beaten up. And some of them like this one here are new. It really depends. It's growing, I would say it's growing well, but it's, it's kind of growing all over the place to be quite honest. There's a new leaf on the end. Yeah, I just keep seeming to knock them off. I think it's because they're growing so near the hook, but it is one of my favorites. It's just a bit of a pain in the ass to grow because I find that the more big chunky leaves you have, the easier they are to knock off, to be honest. I'll not bother getting this one down because honestly, it's I don't really have love for it and I'm a little bit bored with it. I expressed my disappointment with this when I bought it, but this is my regular old Hoya compactor. I just don't love it. It's not what I expected when I bought it. It's It doesn't even look like what it did on the image when I bought it. This is Hoya macrophylla variegata. Is it pot? No, it's not pot of gold. That's the other one. Albo marginata, I think it is. This has had a bit of a rough ride in here. It's growing now and we have a lot of new nice growth on here. That's brand new with some good variegation, but it, it kind of suffered along the way. I don't know what happened, but I moved it in here and I don't know if it was burn or what, but a lot of brown spots kept coming in on the leaves. If you know why that is, please leave a comment because I'm not skilled in Hoya, I'm more skilled in Aroids. But apart from that, since then it's grown okay. It's growing slowly, but the variegation that I'm getting is quite good. 
So I'm pretty pleased with it. I hope I get a really nice big long vine on it this year. So this one up here, if my Glory Awesome is going to let me get to it, is... I think it's Hoya Sunrise. I'll get it down if I can. Yeah, just. Um, I actually hated this when I bought it, right? I saw it because it's not a Hoya I'd seen before and I thought I'll buy it and see if I like it. Because I think I got a reasonable deal on it. I hated it but then it grew foliage in the gaps where it had basically snapped off. And now I like it because it's gone really full and glossy. Um, I'm sure Ben probably hates it by the look of it. Yeah. Yeah, I can kind of tell. <laughs> um, but I love it. It doesn't, does it have a peduncle yet? I don't think it does. Oh no, it does. There's one right there. It hasn't flowered though, but honestly, the amount of new foliage I've had off this thing, it's just, it's like bursting out of the pot. So much of this has filled in since then. It was sun-stressed when I got it. You can only see a tiny trace of it where it was like a purpley color and it's gone all green. But I actually quite like it. I can understand why a lot of people wouldn't like it and it's definitely not a higher I'd go for. And to be honest, if I saw it in a shop, I wouldn't buy it. I think I've just learned to love it through it growing in and being less sparse. But it chills here because to be honest, I quite like the idea of filling in this gap between the plants down here and then the white wall. So I tend to hang it here because it's longer. And I think, unless I'm wrong, that's everything in the room. Oh, there's one more plant. There's one more plant. Yep. And that's this one, yeah. This one suffered a little bit. Just before we go, this is my Anthurium Luxuriance. This was halfway out when I got the plant, I believe. So this damage was already, it had already occurred basically when I got it. This hadn't though. This has taken a little bit of a dive. I think it's stable. It's been like this for a couple of weeks now. So it's not doing amazingly, but I think it's gonna be okay. And that is definitely the last plant in the room. So that was my studio. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my tours, cause I promise you, I promise you eventually I will do a spring shop tour. I just have a lot to do. <laughs> so at some point you will get a spring plant shop tour, maybe in a couple of months or so. So if you'd like to stick around for that and you're not already subscribed, then please feel free to do so. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. But generally they're, you know, I don't have high hopes for them. I'm still not gonna throw them away because you never know, maybe a miracle will happen. So for now, you just farted. Cuddled, mate. <laughs> Fuck's sake, I'm so pleased you're not mic'd. I wonder if you would've picked it up. Honestly, fuck's sake, I can't even do one thing. Right? <laughs> Ah, oh, fucking hell. Sweating. Okay. It's with the, the stress of holding this. The stress of it, okay. I can't remember what I was fucking saying now. <laughs> what was I even talking about? The monster. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> right. So. Dude, honestly.